So let's talk about Destiny. This game was first announced way back in the beginning of 2013 as Bungie's next big thing, their big successor to Halo, the game that was supposed to blow first-person shooters out of the water. It was going to be amazing, and I couldn't wait for it. Bungie hyped this thing to no end. They spent millions and millions of dollars in marketing, made some ridiculously awesome and ridiculously expensive expensive looking trailers to get people pumped out of their minds for this game and it worked. People couldn't wait for Destiny to come out back in September of 2014. And then it released. And reactions were mixed, to say the least. When Destiny first came out, I loved it. I even made a review about it last year, which you can view, shameless plug here where I gushed about the game. I loved it, and I gave it a really high score. But it wasn't long after that review came out that my opinion started to change. After I'd played the game for about a week, I began to realize that I'd seen just about all the game really had to offer. And I found myself getting very bored very quickly. And I stopped playing. And my opinion didn't really grow any better as year one went on. Crota's End was a terrible DLC, didn't add anything of substance. House of Wolves was good and added some cool stuff, but felt like way too little way too late. So when Taken King was announced, and then when it officially released two weeks ago, I was hesitant to say the least. After all, it's $40 if you already have your one, $60 if you're buying it brand new as the collector's edition. That's a full price game's worth for something that I didn't really enjoy the first year of. I was really leery about getting this expansion pack, but I did it anyways. And how does the Taken King fare? <sighs> Me from year one would punch myself in the face for saying this, but Taken King's actually really pretty good. So, what actually is there in Taken King that makes it work so surprisingly well? Honestly, all I can boil it down to is feedback. Players gave Bungie constant feedback, not always in the most positive way, and to their credit, with Taken King, it seems like Bungie really listened, as this first major expansion to kind of bring in year two, as it's supposed to do, addresses a lot of the biggest problems that myself and other players had with Destiny in year one. So let's talk about the campaign first, because that was arguably the worst part of Destiny when it launched, was the actual story. It was terrible. The plot was terrible, the missions were bland and repetitive, the boss fights uninteresting. There was nothing going for Destiny's campaign in year one. Year two, on the other hand, is actually pretty good. Granted, Bungie's done better, Halo. But Taken King's campaign is actually a pretty decent one. Not the plot, mind you. The plot here is still very thin at best, and I'm going to get to that a little bit more later on. But the actual gameplay of the campaign is surprisingly enjoyable, and I think the biggest thing that helps it here is variety. Whereas Year One's campaign contained more instances of, I gotta hack this door, it's gonna take a about three waves worth of dudes before I can hack it. Thank you, Peter Dinklage. There's very little of that in Taken King. In fact, if I remember correctly, there's not a single time where you have to wait X waves of bad guys before your ghost can unlock the door or for him to finish hacking something. That doesn't happen, which right away makes Taken King's campaign miles, miles better than Destiny's campaign. Of course, replacing Peter Dinklage helped. There was that big publicized change. And don't get me wrong, I love Peter Dinklage as much as the next guy, but he just wasn't very good as the ghost. And Nolan North just sounds better in this role. I can't put my finger on what exactly it is. He just sounds more convincing. He sounds more believable. He sounds less bored than Peter Dinklage did. Dinklage sounded 
bored. Nolan North at least sounds a little bit invested in what's going on. Another big improvement to Destiny is the fact that they kind of helped characterize things a little bit. If you'll remember right, there really were no actual characters in Year One Destiny, save for your ghost. There were the vendors, and there were the vanguard characters that would give you your class-specific things, but really, none of them were an actual character. They were merchants. That was it. And once you hit level 20, they became useless, irrelevant merchants. With Taken King, Bungie has done a good job of actually fixing that. For starters, these characters, at least some of them, play a much bigger role in the actual plot, especially Nathan Fillion's character, Cade, for better and for worse. I'll discuss that a little bit later when I get to the negatives. But they've actually done a good job of giving things a little bit more personality. The characters talk more, you hear their opinions more on what's actually going on, and you'd be surprised how big of a difference that makes in making me as the player give a crap what's happening. It also helps that they added a new mechanic with your ghost where you can scan things in the environment and your ghost will give you little tidbits of backstory. It's not much, but it's something that makes the ghost feel less useless and it makes it feel more like you're exploring an actual world where things have actually happened and it's not just there to be cool scenery. Speaking of cool scenery, however, the major new location in this game is the Dreadnought, the Taken King's ship. And oh my god, do I love the Dreadnought. It's, it's, the Dreadnought embodies everything that I had been expecting out of the whole patrol concept from Destiny in year one. It's this huge area. It, I don't know if it actually is bigger, but it feels bigger than most of the areas in the base game, despite being entirely enclosed. And it's full of tons of new content that the base game patrols sorely needed. For, for starters, there's a bunch of new patrol types, which themselves have a lot more variety than the base game ones, which were go here and scan this, kill these dudes, kill these dudes and get their stuff, go here and kill this specific dude. There's more variety to the patrols here, which again is good. You'll notice I keep mentioning the fact that there's more variety here. That is a big difference. Aside from the standard patrol beacons that have been there since year one, there are also unmarked little patrol type missions that you can find all throughout the Dreadnought. Killing enemies will sometimes drop keys which can unlock specific chests of the same type. Or they'll drop access codes which can be punched into a computer which will give you some special objectives to do which will give you, you know, this big loot chest at the end. Small little things like that that add more things to do while you're exploring the Dreadnought. Then there's the whole Court of Oryx thing, which is basically this horde mode boss battle type thing, which gets progressively harder the further you progress in the tiers and offers some really good loot, and it's a lot of fun. Unlike the base game patrols, which were basically, they served as nothing more than XP fodder. You took bounties when you first got on at the tower, you hit patrols until you completed them, you cashed them all in for XP. It was there wasn't much to it. There was very little actual investment. In the Dreadnought, there's actually stuff to do outside of just farming for bounties. There's actually cool little tidbits to discover, little secrets to find here and there, new activities to discover. It's, it's finally expanding on the concept of the patrols into something that I've been hoping for since year one. Again, a very common sentiment that I'm going to be expressing a lot here. And speaking of adding additional content, there's tons and tons of post-campaign content that they've added here in the form of quests. Now you get the big Taken King quest, which is the overarching plotline of the game, which you can probably beat in, I'd say, maybe seven hours. It's not long by any means, but it's not too short. And it's a fun campaign. But beyond that, there are dozens and dozens of additional optional quests that you will get from vendors in the tower that provide a lot of additional content that you can do outside of the main campaign, which is a great thing. It makes things feel less repetitive, less like a grind, because you're going and doing different additional objectives 
when you keep returning to these places after the campaign. You're not just going back and replaying the same story missions. You're going to the same areas, but you're always doing a different objective every time, at least a little bit, and you're getting new loot out of it. It's obviously still a grind, and there's going to be repetition here, but there's much less of it. It makes it feel like there's a lot more to do here, and it gives the game a longevity that if you didn't like the grinding of the cooperative or playing in competitive, the base game lacked that. Here, if you're not a co-op grinder and you're not a competitive person, there's still a fair bit of additional content outside of the campaign that you can play through. And while we're on the topic of the multiplayer, the new multiplayer maps and modes are a lot of fun here. My personal favorite, obviously, would be Rift, which is kind of almost like Destiny Basketball where there's this orb that spawns in the middle of the map, and both teams have to try and take it and dunk it in the other team's goal. It's crazy and chaotic and stupid, but it's a lot of fun. And the new multiplayer maps are very well designed. There's, again, more variety to the map designs than there were in the base game. They feel well thought out. They feel built better for multiple modes here. And the last big positive that I need to talk about here are the new supers, which are awesome. Granted, really, from a gameplay mechanic, they don't add a ton new to the game. They don't change things that much from the new super abilities. Or... And the last positive thing I need to talk about is the new supers, which are so cool. And admittedly, they don't really add a ton as far as gameplay is actually concerned. They don't, like, have this drastic change on how you play the game compared to the base game supers. They just look really cool. The Titan has this flaming hammer that they can throw that explodes when it hits the ground. The Hunter's got this awesome bow and arrow that is just so freaking cool. And then the Warlock, as you've probably seen, has the Emperor Palpatine lightning zap of Doom, which is, again, really freaking cool. From a gameplay mechanic, like I said, they don't really change much of anything. You're not going to be drastically altering your approach to combat based on these new supers. They just, they just look awesome, and they're fun to use. Now, if your biggest problem with Year One Destiny was the gameplay's huge emphasis on grinding for loot, then you might not like Taken King still, either. That's a core part of Destiny's gameplay, and that hasn't changed here. The grind is still a big part of this game. But fortunately, if you are more of a casual fan of the game, like me, there's not nearly as big of a gap between the content that a more casual player can play and the content that is only available to the super hardcore players that grind all the time. There's more of a middle ground, which means that even if you are just a casual player of the game, there's more that you can do here. Loot is given out at a better pace, and is now actually based off of the loot you've got equipped. So even if you're just playing casually, you're still going to be consistently getting better loot to help yourself improve. The grind is still there, and it's still the core of the gameplay, but it's not nearly as extreme this time around. Additionally, there's more buffer content, like I mentioned, between casual and hardcore. All the available quests post-campaign give you a lot more room to just kind of play around without having to grind over and over and over and over until you get to the top level so that you can play the rest of the game. There's a lot more available to players who don't want to grind as much, and the grind itself is a bit easier and more enjoyable thanks to all of the additional new content that I just mentioned. This is a very good thing, because it makes Destiny more accessible to a wider variety of players. It helps keep things from feeling so locked off and restrictive, because Year One Destiny, it felt like if you didn't constantly grind and push yourself to get the best loot possible and play all the time, there was a lot of the game that you just weren't getting to experience. You can do the grind a lot more easily as a casual player here. You don't have to constantly be investing hours of time, because no matter what you're playing, 
you're probably going to get loot that's at least a little bit better than what you've already got. That's a surprisingly big change here. It makes actually a lot of difference and helps make the game feel more forgiving and more accessible to new players. Of, of course, it helps that new profiles are automatically given an item that allows them to jump straight up to level 25 so that they don't have to grind through the base game's campaign. Ugh, that wouldn't be fun. Luckily, you don't have to do that here. The game feels like it's been made much more accessible to less hardcore players. It feels much more forgiving in that sense, which is a major improvement for me personally, and probably for a lot of us. So now that we've talked about all the good things Taken King adds, let's talk about the bad things, or at least the less positive ones. One of the biggest issues I have here is that the Taken King essentially retcons a lot of Year One out of existence. And I'm not just talking about the fact that Dinklebot is completely wiped from existence. That's not even what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that the majority of guns and armor from year one are utterly worthless now. And on the one hand, there are some that have carried over to year two. And thanks to the kiosks that have been added to the tower, if you have a year one gun that carried over to year two, you can scrap your worthless year one version, because it's going to be worthless now, and you can replace it with a year two version that is vastly improved and can be competitive now as Destiny moves forward. Which is nice that they didn't totally retcon Year One's equipment out, but there's still a lot of guns that didn't make the cut. For example, the big obvious one, the Gallahorn Rocket Launcher. On the one hand, I understand why Bungie did that, because Gallahorn was just, that whole thing was a mess for all of Year One. But at the same time, if I had grinded for that thing for weeks or months and finally gotten it and now it's utterly worthless in most of the game, I'd be annoyed. And frankly, I am a little bit disappointed still because some of my personal favorite guns and armor pieces from year one did not make the carryover cut for year two. So they are worthless. And that is disappointing. I realize that's a nitpick, but for me personally, it just kind of bothers me not being able to stick to the awesome armor that I fell in love with with Year One. Especially due to the fact that the game supposedly is now built around an XP system for leveling up. But really, once you hit level 40, it goes back to the light level you get from armor. Which I didn't like. I never liked the light system, and frankly, I was hoping they would do away with it altogether. But it... It's not as bad as it used to be. You have a lot more freedom with what armor you want to wear than you did in year one. You're not nearly as locked into the same handful of armor sets like you were in year one. So they did improve on the light system, but personally, I still would have preferred to see the whole thing gone altogether. I just, it's never sat right with me. On to the more obviously bad things. The biggest and most obvious is the fact that the actual core storyline of the game is still borderline non-existent. The campaign itself is a lot more fun this time around, but the plot is still very thin. Basically, for those that haven't been following along, in the first DLC, Crota's End, you kill the title character, Crota. And now his dad, Oryx, the Taken King of the Hive, comes into the solar system He's pissed off at you and wants to kill you. You've got to kill him first. That's basically the plot of the game. And again, you can get more details if you scan the environment, but not really much actual plot. It's almost always just incidental things. As with year one, most of the actual plot is doled out to you in the grimoire cards, and I still despise this system because even after a year, Bungie is still forcing you to get their stupid app and go to your phone and read the cards if you want any of the actual story to this game, and I still hate that. Now, in theory, there is nothing wrong with the Grimoire cards. If they'd done like, say, Mass Effect did and had an in game codex where you could pause the game and read these whenever you wanted to, I'd have no problem with this, but it's the fact that you have to go out of the game still after a year and check your phone and read these grimoire cards. I have no idea why that of all things is still in the game. I still hate that. 
And while the campaign itself is certainly much more varied than the base game's campaign was, and there is a lot more new stuff to it, it still does feel like Bungie reused just a bit too much of the base game, especially for something that's asking essentially full price for what's supposed to be an expansion pack, especially when it comes to locations in the game. Much of the campaign that doesn't take place on the Dreadnought is taking place in the same patrol locations we've had since the game launched. I was really looking forward to the thought of exploring new locations, but everything on Earth still takes place in the Cosmodrome. Everything on Venus and Mars and the Moon still take place in the same locations. And with some of the multiplayer maps branching out into different parts of these planets, I was really hoping that the campaign would do the same and let us go out and explore other parts of these planets outside of the patrol areas and see new things, see what the rest of these planets look like. And unfortunately, we don't get that. You're still going to be playing through the same handful of locations. And the Taken themselves are kind of a mixed bag as far as enemies are concerned. On the one hand, they look cool. They've got this weird kind of flowing black motif, almost like they're made of ink or something, which is cool looking. And some of them have cool new powers that put an interesting twist on fighting these otherwise established enemies. But too many of them essentially just feel like carbon copies of their base game version, just reskinned to be taken. And it's a little disappointing that more effort wasn't put into these enemies. And the same thing does carry over to the boss fights for Taken King. I found myself especially disappointed with the big final boss against Oryx at the end of the campaign. He's just a generic boss. You know, he's got a special attack that he does on a pattern. He's got minions that attack you when he's not doing that. He even teleports you to a circular arena so that he can repeat this pattern over and over until you kill him. For an enemy that gets hyped up so much throughout the campaign, I was really hoping more effort would have been put into his boss, into the big ending of the story. And unfortunately, his boss fight is probably the lamest of all the boss fights in Taken King. There is one especially cool one against a giant shank maybe halfway through the campaign where he can like raise and lower cover in the room. It's a really fun boss fight. There are also some smaller issues with Taken King that did not get fixed. There's still no matchmaking system for the raids which is extremely disappointing which means you still have to hope that you know six people who play Destiny on the same platform as you, that are at the same level as you, that can all be available at the same time to go in and do this big raid, which are still the centerpiece of Destiny as a game. They always have been. And it's either that, or you have to go into a tower and spam all the players in the lobby saying, I'm looking to do the raid, does anyone want to join? Which happens far too frequently, still. And I still do not understand why Bungie would not just implement a matchmaking system for raids the way literally almost everything else in this game has a matchmaking system. I don't understand why they didn't do that. My only other big issue is that the campaign focuses a little bit too much on Nathan Fillion's character of Cade, the Hunter Vanguard. On the one hand, it's Nathan Fillion. He's always awesome. And the character is... If you've grown tired of the Malcolm Reynolds shtick, you're not going to find him enjoyable. I haven't, so I still thought he was entertaining. But I was disappointing that some of the other characters, especially the other vanguards, took a pretty big backseat to Cade. He basically ran the whole show. You get to see the character of Eris from Crota's End. She's a fairly big part. But for the most part, the rest of them are just relegated to narrating one or two missions and your class's specific quest to acquire their new super ability. And it is a little disappointing that the other characters didn't get explored as much, but that's just a little nitpick, really. So at the end of the day, how do I feel about Taken King? On the one hand, it's really hard not to feel like this is still too little too late. After all, we're just now getting the destiny that most of us expected when the base game launched a year ago. And it's still a little hard not to be bitter about that. And truth be told, I am a little bitter about that. It's hard not to feel 
a little cheated over the last year that we're only just now getting the game that we all thought we would get a year ago. But I suppose better late than never, and Taken King is actually a lot of fun to play through. There are some still some core things about the game that don't sit right with me. I still hate the RN Jesus responsible for the loot system. I will curse that name until the day I die. But that's not the game's fault. That just comes with the genre that Bungie wants this to be. And that's okay. If you liked Destiny Year One, then you've probably already bought The Taken King. You probably even bought the Collector's Edition. You're already playing it. You already love it, I'm sure. But if you were like me and were more hesitant about Year One Destiny, maybe still give this one a try. It is certainly a big step in the right direction from Year One. It makes a lot of improvements, and it is fun to play now. If you have friends that play Destiny, I absolutely recommend that you get the Taken King expansion and go. It's a lot of fun, especially if you've got friends to play with. If you don't have friends to play with and didn't love Year One, maybe wait until the price drops on the Collector's Edition and then grab it in a few months when it's not $60. But overall, Taken King is a good expansion pack. Whether or not this is the game that we should have gotten a year ago, we can argue all day long. But regardless of that, what we've got here now is fun. It's not perfect by any means, but it is fun, and it's a step in the right direction. The final score for Destiny, Taken King, is a solid 8 out of 10. It's good. It really is.